Well, hello there, all you wonderful people, and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays, the channel where we are learning more about nature by playing games. My name is Will, and the sun is rising over the Veronga Savannah here in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Now, last time we were busy, well, tracking some lesser kudu, and also trying to spot some wildebeest in the Tsonga region of the map over here. So, the Tsonga is actually quite a big area, and I've had some luck in the meantime, just kind of hanging around in this area, I do believe. Uh, there could be some wildebeest. And as you can see, I've got some hunting pressure over here because, yeah, I was shooting some Hemswok in this area. But let's jump right into it. Let's actually go and see if we can spot some wildebeest again. Now, Grandfather here was very concerned about the fact that there were so many wildebeest on the reserve. They had moved in across the river and now they were eating everything. And unfortunately, that is part of nature. Uh, animals are going to eat a lot of plants especially if they reach very high numbers and then they are possibly going to starve to death. But if you have an open reserve like Veronga Savannah here technically is, they would be able to move away. They would, would be able to migrate. And a lot of animals like the blue wildebeest are very migratory or in some cases at least nomadic. Nomadic just meaning that they have more unpredictable patterns where they move uh, from this area to that area to that area to that area. You never know exactly where they're going to go. They generally follow the rains and wherever the food is. Uh, migratory, meaning that they've got more predictable uh, movement patterns. You know that they are going to go into a certain area in a certain season. So the Serengeti, for example, that's a good example of a migratory system. And in other open areas, they may, might be more nomadic. Okay, so we've lost the... Lesser Kuru that's fleeing over there, that's all right. We're not after Lesser Kuru at the moment. We are actually here to spot three wildebeest in the Tsonga region. So we're just chasing the wildebeest. That's what we are after at the moment. Uh, what was feeding here? Probably scrub here. Oh, blue wildebeest. Uh, they will come here between 0 and 3 in the morning. Well, one will come here uh, between 0 and 3 in the morning. Okay, it's way past that time. But in many areas, like in Botswana, for example, there was this major, I think it was the foot and mouth disease uh, fence that was put up that was to try and prevent the spread of foot and mouth disease from blue wildebeest to uh, cattle, to domestic cattle. Uh, there was this massive fence line that was put up and that was actually put up. As far as I recall, the migration patterns of the wildebeest was in a north-south fashion, so they would move north and south depending on the season and unfortunately that fence line was put up directly across that migration path. Uh, resulting in a lot of wildebeest actually uh, walking up to the fence and then just following that fence line, eventually dying of thirst because wildebeest are water-dependent species. They need water in order to survive and they need to drink every day, basically. And so with the fence line there, they would walk and walk and walk until they were exhausted and died as a result. And that has had a major impact on the migration patterns and on the numbers of blue wildebeest in places like Botswana. Now, we have got the warning call of the blue wildebeest right up ahead. It's about 130 to 180 meters up ahead somewhere. We are just going to slowly make our way there and hopefully get to at least spot a blue wildebeest so that we can tick that mission off. Of course, I do still want to hunt the buffalo. Unfortunately, I need that very fancy pants gun and I've got nowhere near enough money for that. I've got a little bit, bit I'm doing a little bit better. I've got 13,000, almost 14,000 in the bank at the moment, but that gun costs 90,000. So yeah, that is not going to happen uh, this episode. It may happen next episode, depending on how much hunting I get to do in the meantime. Now, this coming Friday, Nick and I will be doing a grounded video. So a little bit to be running around in grounded again. This Saturday, I'm actually away on field work with my honors students. So I will not be able to do a live stream this Saturday, uh, but I will be back again next Saturday for another live stream. So join me then for that. But you guys are having a bit of an off week for this Saturday. There's a side striped jackal. Oh, there's a blue wildebeest as well. There was a side striped jackal. You can never mistake a wildebeest with their vertical bands and black men or their scent. Wildebeest bulls leave heaps of stinky, stinky mm -hmm. dung to mark their territory. Be careful you don't step in any on your way to spot one more. There's some poo right here to step on. <laughs> A lot of animals will use scent marking, of course, to, to indicate to other individuals of the same species that, listen, this is my territory, please go away, please stay out. 
uh, I am the dominant bull in this case, or I, this is my territory in cases of other animals. Uh, even things like wild dogs, African wild dogs or painted dogs, they will also mark the territory. And they do that by using very, very stinky poo. Uh, well, it looks like very stinky poo at least. And I have personally seen wild dogs as well, marking their territory by just squatting down and spraying this very liquidy poo in a circle all around where they were standing. So a bit gross, but very awesome to see. Now we did just hear a mating call from a wildebeest right up ahead, which is going to sneak up on her and hopefully get to spot her and maybe earn some cash by hunting her as well. But there is one also way down there. Oh, you're tracking wildebeest like an old pro, like hey, hey. Let me guess, now we have to hunt some wildebeest. Time to put your studies into practice. Will the bees spook easily, so you'll only need to have as three of them to get the herd moving a bit. But, uh, will the bees stampede will crush you like a tetsi. So shoot from a safe distance, at least 150 meters or more. Shoot from any closer and you are a mampara. Mm. But you're not a mampara. Play it safe, grandchild. It was a warning call just up ahead here was the blue wildebeest about 20 meters so I'm gonna just sneak closer see if I can get uh, within shot range however I think grandfather wants us to shoot from at least 150 yeah 150 meters we can't do that with a bow so we're going to have to switch to a rifle for that so we're going to switch over to a different mission as uh, one that we can actually use the bow for we can of course hunt some springbuck again that may be a good idea oh actually let's do the lesser kudu one yeah, let's do that one. Now, the lesser kudu you'll find in the thickets to the south. So, actually, I think it's the thicket, thickets all around. But I think let's head to Hunsuti Hollow. Because we've got the lovely fever trees there. And in those thickets, you will find the lesser kudu as well. Of course, we are also heading into the buffalo territory. So, we do have to be careful with that. They really will be have their home ranges around here. Thinking they calling it a territory would be wrong because buffalo have got more of a home range and that is an area that they will utilize, but it's not de actively defended. A territory you have to actually defend for it to be a territory. If it's just an area that you live in and you don't spend energy defending it against other individuals or other species or other anythings, then it is just a home range. You have to spend energy defending it for it to be a territory. Now for our current mission we have to spot a lesser kudu and we also have to shoot one and then pass the harvest check with a quick kill bonus and that uh, may be the problem. We have to like get the heart or one of the other major major organs for it to die instantly. Now the lesser kudu is more nocturnal than the greater kudu. They would generally be spending their nights uh, feeding more in more open areas and in the daytime they would then rest in the thickets. So, as you start heading into denser vegetation, that's technically at least where you would be finding them during the daytime. They've got this pattern. It's just a safety protection against predators, especially humans, where they are active at night. They've got very good night vision. And then during the daytime, they just prefer to be in denser areas where it's safer. Now, interesting, with the lesser kudu, they tend to spend more time in dense thickets, it seems, than the greater kudu. Uh, because the greater kudu is a little bit more bulky, also has got bigger horns, wider horns as well, which means that they may get trapped in thickets with those big horns a little bit more easily than lesser kudu will. Now, with both kudu species, females don't have horns, though, so only the males really have that great r greater risk of getting trapped in the dense thickets. But the lesser kudu has got more slender horns. Uh, horns are also more closely spaced to one another. So they have got less of a chance of actually getting trapped in these thickets. It's one of the reasons you don't find kudu running around in the forest. Those big bulky horns just are not very well suited for life in the very, very dense forests of Africa. Now in these thickets that we are, the kudu would of course be the browsers. They would be feeding on all these lovely shrubs going all, growing all over the place. But there's also quite a lot of grass in this area and you would then of course find buffalo feeding on that. So I do have to be careful. This is prime habitat for buffalo as well. 
So that's one of the very cool things I like about nature, is you'll find a whole bunch of different animals in the same area, but they're all feeding on different things. Like the kudu feeding over here on the shrubs, you'll have your buffalo feeding on taller grasses, and even within grazes and between browsers, you'll have them feeding on different things. Uh, niche complementarity, where different species have different niches, because they can't have the same niche. If two species have the same niche, they will outcompete one another. There are some buffalo in the area as well. Anyway, uh, if two species are in the same area and they have the same niche, one species will tend to outcompete the other one. And there we go. There's one buffalo. Mm, we're just going to move slightly more to the left hand side here, hoping they don't run at us. But then with niche complementarity, the, the, you can have two or three different grazers, for example, in an area. And one species will be feeding on taller grasses, one will be feeding on shorter grasses, one will be feeding more in the open, one will be feeding in the shaded areas. So they don't have exactly the same niche or role in nature. They, ooh, there's a nice, a very nice big one. Oh, goodness. I am contemplating going for that one. I think I'm going to go for that one, guys. Let's just mark so we can see exactly where it is. Now we have to slowly but surely make our way there and take it down with a bow and hope that there are not many other individuals between us and him. So that is a very nice ball. It's a little bit more ruddy brown in color. As mentioned before, it's more the coloration of the forest buffalo that you'll find in Africa, that one being in the Congo Basin rainforests not being in the savannah as we see it here it may move into more grassy slightly more open areas as well but it's not in south africa where the Voronga savannah map is technically set now this one i suspect will be a gold trophy at least we're hoping at least for a gold trophy i think there is maybe a chance for diamond but i'm not 100 percent sure i think diamond is a trophy score at the top there of 150 or up there's a mating call as well okay so it is he is completely oblivious to our presence uh, unfortunately now he is moving again no buffalo don't move oh, there's another one there's a female ah oh, he's found his female ah oh, that's cool the males of course would try to gain control over the buffalo breeding herd and the big males will stand a oh, hello fricky uh, big males will stand a better chance at actually taking over the breeding herd. But occasionally there will be a younger, stronger male trying to take it over and succeeding. And if he does then, the old bull will become one of those Daga boys as we have them. Those old mud men uh, or mud boys. And they're called Daga boys because the Daga or the mud will be stuck on them. They spend a lot of time hanging around watering holes. Oh, this one's going to sleep. Okay. Hanging around watering holes, hanging around in mud pools, uh, just get regaining their strength, which may give them an opportunity to actually take over the breeding herd again. But in some cases, those big old males will just stay dugger boys for the rest of their lives. Now, the males in the herds are often seen as less dangerous than old dugger boys because the ones in the herd at least have the herd for protection. Whereas these males, they are all on their own. They have to survive on their own and they're perceived as being a little bit more prone to violence and a little bit more aggressive than males that are in herds. And we are very, very nice and close to it now, hoping that if we actually crouch over here, we can have a clear shot, though I'm not 100% sure. It does seem like it is slightly behind some branches and stuff there. Let's just have a look. Hmm, there is a chance. Oh, there's a whole herd, actually. Now, this is not an old dugger boy. This is a breeding bull. I'm going to hope for a nice clean shot. Right there. And he's already down to 50. 25 to 50%. 0 to 25. He's down. And there's a shot on this buffalo that ran straight over me. Oh no. And this one's dead. Okay. Alrighty. Of course, having attacked one, this one had seen me and uh, decided, screw you, you are a very dangerous bush. 
I'm going to charge over you. Now, let's have a look. In theory, is this a male or a female? Oh, this could be a female. Mm, the horns not quite meeting. This does look like a female. It's lacking some uh, certain characteristics. Uh, so the horns are not, it should actually not be meeting quite as much here, but it's not as pronounced as you would have in a typical male. So yeah, this is most likely a female and it's a female. Yes. Part of the breeding herd. A nice big female though. A nice little silver trophy. Nowhere near gold, but anyway, this is a nice big old female um, Cape Buffalo. So let's go and see. I'm not, not sure whether any of the male or not sure whether any of the other individuals in the herd are going to be aggressive towards me, but or are still present in the area. But let's have a look here at the uh, male that we had harvested. And we're just going to walk normally. If they want to come at us, they will have to come at us. Hello, there's a warthog right up ahead. There goes a Cape Buffalo fleeing. Not sure in which direction they're fleeing. Just have to keep an eye out. Maybe they'll start fleeing in this direction. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's a Fricky. Hello, Fricky. Little warthog. There's a warning call of the lesser cooler. We've got a chance to take one down. Okay. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that's a gold trophy. Diamond would have been 151. Okay, it was almost within range of being a diamond trophy. But a very nice, big, ruddy brown Technically forest buffalo, but the forest buffalo also don't have these big horns that we find with the cape buffalo. Anyway, that is a very, very nice male. Now we do have the lesser kudu somewhere up ahead. So let's see if we can actually spot it. There's one, I think. There's a female. Now we need her to come closer. We need to get her... To come within striking range of the bow and then get a nice quick kill on her. That's another buffalo. We're going to have to take it down. We can't have it standing between us. Is something running at me? Oh, it's another buffalo. Okay, okay, okay. I heard movement. But I think I got the heart of that cape buffalo that was standing so nicely looking at me. This is uh, intense. Now the lesser kudu is currently in the same genus as the greater kudu, which is Trachylarphus, but it is possibly at some point going to switch over to a different genus. I'm not sure whether it's Ametragus or something along those lines, uh, because of the fact that it is when the Trachylarphus group split, the Trachylarphidae, whatever they are called, the Trachylarphinae, I think it is, the subfamily that includes the Kudu, the um, Bushbuck, the Bongo, all those types of spiral horned antelope and the eland as well. When that group split up into different species, the lesser Kudu was one of the first to split off from the basal group. So it's, a, it's less related to the Kudu than it is to any of the other species in the group. So it's uh, quite possibly going to be split off at some point into a different genus. And it was originally put in a different genus. I think it was originally put in Amitragus, and now they want to potentially switch it back to that as well. well. We haven't heard anything from our lesser kudu friend at the moment, or for quite a while now. We are just crawling around looking to see if we can find her. Now it is of course quite possible that she had fled when we shot the two buffalo. There's something there. There's something. I think that, that's the lesser kudu. That's the lesser kudu. We have a chance. Okay, we did not really have a chance because I messed it up. So many of them. Oh my word, all the kudu were here. I just saw the one. Oh, man. Well, now, I was too eager. I was too, too eager beaver to wait. If I had just waited, I may have, I may have had the whole herd coming past me. But no, Will wants to get the lesser kudu as quickly as possible. And yeah, 
that happen. Nonetheless, let's have a look. Maybe we got an organ at least. Then we'll be able to at least harvest her. I suspect I didn't even get an, a vital hit because there's the blood. No organs hit. Man. But the lesser kudu, as mentioned before, not actually found in South Africa. This one is found in East Africa, in the Serengeti, is where you would find the lesser kudu. And then the greater kudu is actually found in South Africa. Much larger, the greater kudu, obviously, than the lesser kudu. So as I recall, it's called uh, Tragilaphus imberbi, which means beardless. Uh, so as far as I recall, it means either the... I think it's actually the throat doesn't have that typical beard that we find with the uh, greater kudu. Unfortunately, the wrong species that they've got in the game here. Now, in the game Way of the Hunter, they actually do have in the Tikamoon Plains map that's coming out, well, as I'm recording this today on the 11th of August, uh, that one will have the Greater Kudu, which is quite cool. Uh, look forward to seeing what is happening in that map. And one day, maybe I'll even play that on the channel as well, because they've got some interesting animals in that game and map as well. Oh, and there you go, the Lesser Kudus. Man, I was just thinking, you know what, these lesser kudu may be in the area, but it's so difficult to spot because of the thickets. And that's exactly why the lesser kudu are found in thickets, or why kudu overall prefer being in thickets. It's more difficult to actually spot them. So unfortunately, it seems we are not going to have a good luck with them. There's our kudu female. Hornless, only the males have horns, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah, really a horrible shot. I got her in the leg. Oh, man. At least I got her in the end. But I need that quick kill bonus in order to actually complete the mission. Let's continue with our antler rattler. Uh, even though technically the kudu don't have antlers, they've got horns. Horns being uh, permanent fixtures to the head, whereas antlers are shed at the end of the breeding, breeding season. So deer, for example, have got antlers and antelope will have horns. Horns are also more outgrowths of the actual skull than just uh, antlers are, or than antlers are. Unfortunately, I can't see any lesser kudu. So I think on that unsuccessful note, that is also where we are going to have to end today's video, guys. So thank you very much for joining me on a little adventure. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like. Please share the video. Let your friends watch it. Uh, and let's all learn together about Africa. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that as well. It really helps the channel out. It helps the channel to grow. Uh, then we can reach more people and tell more people about nature and how awesome nature is. Thanks again for your time, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys again on Friday, where Nick and I are back in Grounded. So until next time, everybody, stay safe. I'll see you all soon. Bye.